How's it going guys? Domain of Fear, this is the one most of you wanted, so here it is, let's see why this place is special and what skins you may get from the chests. Obviously this is not an old school chest run because we are in Elona, but this doesn't mean you can't get any valuable items. And one of the main reasons people chest run here are the terror web riders and those weapons which they are related to. So ghostly staves, eternal shields, eternal bows, storm bows. And all of these have an inscription slot, meaning it doesn't matter what mods and inscriptions the drops have, you can modify them as much as you want. On one hand this is a good thing since you get easy access to nice skins and you can make them perfect, uh, but on the other hand this limits their value since they are not as rare as an old school perfect shield for example. And when I first heard of this farm someone told me there is a thread on Guild Wars Legacy and this helped much in the beginning, but I tried to improve this run a bit. Anyway, kudos to Mr. Neutral CH, he's the one who described this chest run in the first place. Uh, anyway, I tried to improve this as much as I could and with the dervish build I made I was able to survive 99% of the time. But there are two things to keep in mind. The first is an environmental effect called the cover of fear. And what it does is slow down the characters or the movement attacking and activation times are reduced. And this sucks in hard mode since you can't break a grow and enemies follow you for long. And the other thing which sucks is a monster called Grasp of Insanity and its monster skill the Fingers of Chaos. And depending on your primary and secondary profession this skill does different things. If you're a monk, even if just a monk secondary, it will remove enchantments. And as far as we know there is no effect if your primary and secondary professions are not uh, one of the core classes. So we must choose from uh, Durf, Para, Ritu and Asa to negate the skills effect. Alright, first thing first, this is the route of a full run. If you only go this far you will end up with two or three chests most of the time. Rarely only one chest spawns, sometimes even four chests. Runs don't take long, two or two and a half minutes each with perma spell prevention and perma 50% running speed. If you want you can cover the whole map, this is how it looks by the way. And just out of curiosity I was messing with different quests and extra spawns and if you take a quest called holding the line you may get titans in this area. And these titans are very similar to the ones in Hell's Precipice so in theory you may farm inscribable magma shields. Now this is all nice and good but the main problem with this is the titan spawning habits. I've tried a lot of different routes and things but couldn't make it work, at least not regularly. Never mind, take a look at this clip, I made it work at least once, but this happens too rarely in my opinion to even think about farming magma shields. Maybe some other areas and some other quests will work, or if someone knows how to make it work let us know in a comment. Anyway, let's see what a full run looks like in this area, map travel to gate of fear, activate your lightbringer title, get this build and get the shield set. By the way, if you have a shield with plus 10 armor against demons, that's perfect because most of the enemies here are demons, but if you don't have one, any max armor or shield will work as well. Now grab some heroes, and to be honest their build doesn't really matter, they die usually at the first boss, but if you want them to survive longer, uh, give them some self heal, some hex removal skills and speed boost. Now enter the domain of pain, and after you've done the reason trick you can start the farm. Simply maintain wow of piety, door and stability all the time, and Run with Zealous Renewal Pious Haze combination. Don't use Shroud of Distress yet, because we must time it well. Use Vow of Silence at the Monk Boss and pass the Reign of Terror group too. If there is a chest around them, go for it, otherwise go on and reach the Rash Shrine at the Forgotten Warden NPC. Now is the time to use Shroud of Distress and you must maintain Vow of Silence all the time here. If you don't, delays and mesmers will cause spells on you. And look around on the left hand side first, sometimes there is a chest on the far left area, in the river area. If you don't see any chest, turn right and keep south or southwest. Now prepare to use you move like a dwarf when you get close to the chest, because the grasp of incident is always pop up around the chest. Cripple helps breaking their aggro, otherwise they can interrupt you and, and kill you easily in big numbers. If you take too much damage, Shroud of Distress will save your ass, obviously, or you can consider using Dark Escape if all of your defenses are gone. For chest this time, decent run, 
And when you reach the next resurrection shrine, and don't see any more luck chest, type slash resign and you can do the farm again. Now take a look at my best drops. Like I said, everything here is inscribable, so don't expect 50 or 100 armbrace value items here. These are more like the few actors category, but I think if you want a nice ghosty stuff or a nice eternal shield for yourself or for your heroes, this farm is a better option than opening the Z chest a million times. Also don't forget we get tons of sights and spears and the zealous or 20% enchant mode or even a 20% aptitude not attitude inscription is also worth a few actors. Unfortunately you can't get Q8 items here, the monsters level is too high for the Q8s. But I think it's a good question whether you should do this farm in hard mode or normal mode. Same build, same pet, same monsters, is there a difference? Guys, what do you think? Well, there are a few differences. The table on the left shows the drops in normal mode, and the table on the right is the hard mode version. The same colors uh, mark the same weapons, and surprisingly I got way more ghostly staves from normal mode, around the same eternal shields in both, and more storm bows and eternal bows in normal mode. Maybe this is not a surprise if you think about all the elite and regular tomes. Um, we can say those decrease all the other drops chance after all. And another interesting comparison is the amount of chests. Uh, but I only kept track of 25 runs, but again normal mode seemed a bit better. Maybe if I've uh, collected more data the chest numbers would be almost the same. And another comparison purple and gold weapons. This is not surprising either. You get way more gold items uh, from hard mode, uh, 312 versus 210, so there is a huge difference in this aspect. But guys, don't forget the purple item may have a max damage as well. Take a look at these weapons, uh, you can do the same damage, the same everything with both. But if I wanted to decide which mode is better, normal or hard mode, I think I would choose hard mode actually, because all of the possible elite tones and the higher gold item ratio. And another interesting fact is the highly salvageable inscriptions. I have no data from other Nightfall chest runs, but around every 10th or 8th, 9th drop contained this inscription. I was a lazy ass and merged them all, but if you need some, this is a great place to farm them. I'd maybe put them on uh, great countries at the Raptor farm and get 100 plus dash from each item. Anyway, the most common drop was the Blazing Wing Wand in both normal and hard mode. Ghostly Staff on 2nd place and all the other items sub 2%. And few more notes uh, regarding the drops. The Fiery Dragon Swords may drop here, Icy Blade Axes as well and Fiery Blade Axes too. So guys this was the Domain of Fear chest run. Hope you enjoyed this episode of the series and please consider subscribing, uh, rate the video and see you next time.